Hello everyone and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. A few weeks ago, I did a video on 10 great cover songs by The Beatles, and some of the songs came from The Beatles Live from the BBC. That got me thinking that this album has a lot of great songs on it. The Beatles fan gets a chance to hear The Beatles Live and hear the music that spoke to them. George mentioned that the group used to go to Brian Epstein, their manager's store, and look at records that he had, and he had known some... He had some known and unknown songs, and the Beatles got the records that interested them. The songs I picked won't include the songs that I picked from the Beatles cover songs video, uh, but I think I did actually include one. Sorry about that. But we'll get songs from uh, five from disc one and five from disc two. And there's so many great songs on this treasure trove, it'll be hard to pick. And this is the Beatles in their prime. First up is I Got a Woman. This song was never recorded, but the Beatles performed the song two times on the BBC Live. And this is a song done by Ray Charles originally, and then by Elvis Presley. And the Beatles copied the version by Elvis, which makes sense because John and Paul were so fascinated by Elvis when they first saw him and heard his songs. John stated at one point, before Elvis, there was nothing. John began his career into rock and roll because of the King. So John did the uh, vocals and rhythm guitar, Paul McCartney bass, George Harrison lead guitar, Ringo Starr drums. John Lennon has that perfect rock and roll voice, and he begins the song as great as his hero Elvis. And George Harrison is doing a great job on lead guitar, and you can hear John's enthusiasm for the song with his lively rhythm guitar playing. This song shows the group's talent, and it's a great song. Next up, Baby It's You. This song was a hit for the Shirelles and for the Beatles as well. And it isn't surprising the song was composed by Burt Bacharach, and the live version of the song was on the Beatles at the Live at the BBC album. So John Lennon did the vocals, rhythm guitar, Paul McCartney bass, backing vocals, George Harrison lead guitar, backing vocals, and Ringo drums. So I love the sha la 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 at the beginning of the song, and you could tell John likes this song, and his lead vocal is fantastic. He had to climb high for the part of the song. I can't help myself, and you could tell his voice is a little irritated then. Uh, John does a great job on the rhythm guitar parts, and George shows his talents on the lead guitar part of the song. It's a fabulous song. Next up, You Really Got a Hold on Me, and this song was written by Smokey Robinson, and the Beatles performed that song three times on the BBC, so it must have been a song they enjoyed performing. Uh, John Lennon did the vocals, and George did the harmonizing vocal with Paul doing backing vocals. And wow, the harmonies are so well done. Hearing this song and realizing it was done live is amazing. It's that great. Next we have Johnny B. Good. you got to have a Chuck Berry song, and so this song was written and performed by Chuck Berry. Uh, needless to say, he was a great influence on the Beatles. So Paul McCartney stated that, Chuck Berry was another massive influence with Johnny B. Good. We'd go up to John's bedroom with his little record player and listen to Chuck Berry records, trying to learn them. Uh, the Beatles' Bible said between 1957 to 1966, they performed more songs written by Chuck Berry than any other artist. And John Lennon said in 1972, in the 50s when people were virtually singing about nothing, Chuck Berry was writing social comment songs with incredible meter to the lyrics. And when I hear rock and Rock, good rock, of the caliber of Chuck Berry, I just fall apart and have no other interest in life. The world could be ending if rock and roll is playing. So I think John, uh, I think I like John's version of the song more than Chuck Berry singing it. John sang it in a powerful way and also in a mellow way at the same time. Um, George Harrison did the lead guitar and he did it with style. And John was playing the rhythm guitar, Paul the bass, and Ringo kept the beat going with the drums. Uh, this song always sounds good no matter what the decade, and the Beatles paid a great tribute to Chuck Berry by their fine rendition of it. Long Tall Sally. Well, this song was originally done by Little Richard, and Paul McCartney takes the lead vocals because he's the only one who could get close to the how Little Richard sounded. Paul really goes wild with his singing and the high notes he gets with his ooze. Um, Ringo is really taking the lead with the instruments. It's like he's the lead and the others are accompanying him. And John Lennon stated, Little Richard was one of those all-time greats. The first time I heard him, a friend of mine had been in Holland and brought back a 78 with Long Tall Sally on one side and slipping and sliding on the other. It blew our heads. We never heard anybody sing like that in our lives, and all those saxes playing like crazy. 
So John Lennon said that, and that was in the anthology book. Now we're going to pick five songs from uh, just two, and the first is Roll Over Beethoven. The Beatles went to uh, the Chuck Berry music book once again with this song. And according to Rolling Stone and Cub Coda of All Music, Berry wrote the song in response to his sister Lucy, always using the family piano to play classical music when Berry wanted to play popular music. It was, as biographer Bruce Pegg says, inspired in part by the rivalry between his sister Lucy's classical music training and Berry's own self-taught rough-and-ready music preference. The lyric rollover Beethoven tell Tchaikovsky the news refers to how classical composers would roll over in their graves upon hearing that classical music had given way to rock and roll. And that sounds probably like truth there. <laughs> so George has heavy work to do here with the lead guitar and lead vocals. And George is really singing strong here. You could tell he, he's into the song. And Ringo is drumming his heart out behind him in support. So they did a great rendition of this song. Now we have Matchbox. And this song was done originally by Carl Perkins. He was a great inspiration to the Beatles with his rockabilly style. Ringo's in the lead for this song, and Ringo does great when he stays in his range, and Ringo's uh, singing well in this song, and he, then he does talking throughout the song, like, like, all right, John, when he does his solo guitar part. Ringo is really pounding the drums and cymbals, and it's cool to hear this song done live. You could picture them being on a stage at the cavern doing it. <laughs> I Forgot to Remember to Forget Her is a, a really great title that's up next. Um, the Beatles Hero. Elvis Presley was the first to record the song, and it's neat to hear the Beatles step into the country genre in the recording of the song. And George did the lead vocals, and I'm surprised Paul didn't do it. Ringo's providing that steady beat with a bit of shuffle sound to it, and the lead guitar is strong and clear, and George once again sings with power. It's a great performance. Next up is I Just Don't Understand. So Anne Margaret surprisingly did a version of this song first, and the Beatles didn't mind singing songs that were originally done by female singers. I guess that was uh, putting a neat twist to the song with them doing it instead of a woman. Um, John Lennon did the vocals, and he gives the song personality, and you can feel the emotion in the song, the way he sings it. The song sounds a bit folksy and a bit country, and the guitar sounds intertwined with a cool effect, and I like how... Paul and George come in with oohs in the background when they sing the background. They do it like a lead sound, and they're equal with John. And Ringo keeps the band on track with a steady beat. It's a different sound for the Beatles, and they did a great job with it. Okay, the last song on the list is Don't Ever Change. And this song is so charming, I love it. The verses are the Beatles singing sincerely about his love, who isn't fancy, but he loves her just as she is, sweet and with her great personality. The song was written by Carol King and Jerry Goffin. This was the one time where Paul and George did a harmony duet on the song, and it was a treat to listen to that. Okay, the Beatles Live at the BBC recording is special because even though the sound may not have been the best on some songs, it was a chance for the fan to almost feel like they're out in the crowd listening to the band live. And it was hard to come up with just 10 songs out of the recordings because all the songs and all the talking parts made it a Beatle fest, and you can't beat that. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. And I hope everybody's been having a good day, and tune in again soon for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.